Leica is better than Fuji or is it Fuji that's better than Leica? That's a question I've been asked a lot. I keep being asked that. Uh, in 2020, which one is the most prominent, the most important, or the most um, accessible, easy to use, better quality? There's a lot of factors. We're gonna take them up one by one in this video right after the intro. Okay, so this video is mainly um, a talk, my own opinions. This is not going to be by the book. This is not going to be uh, by any means the uh, opinion officially by Leica or by Fuji or by anyone. I'm not being paid to do this. This is uh, something I wanted to do for a while again because I talked about it three years ago. Since then, I've evolved a little bit in terms of cameras, in terms of views, knowing the product, and um, I can now tell you a little bit better what my thoughts are on these two brands. This is going to be the Leica M mainly. So I will be talking around the M. It's not gonna be about the Q, it's not gonna be about the SL, it's not gonna be about the other automatic Leica cameras. I'm not gonna be doing the X100 series, I'm not gonna be doing the X Pro series or the uh, GF X series. It's going to be mainly these two cameras. First point, true rangefinder versus mirrorless camera. This camera here, the X-T4 or X-T2 and so forth, uh, this camera is not a true range finder. Um, in some of my past videos, uh, I have asked other people or told them there's no other such thing as a Leica M, digital Leica M from M8 on. Um, so this looks similar to a range finder, but this is not a true range finder because the, the, the true range finder, you have a little uh, viewfinder, the window right here allows you to match what you see here and what the lens sees. Uh, it handles the parallax and what you see is basically guidelines you can see outside of the frame versus this guy here where it's actually not the case. You will tell me the X-Pro3 or the X-100 are a bit more rangefinder-like. Yes, they are a little bit more rangefinder-like, but they're not true rangefinders. So if you're looking for that type of uh, photography, that old style where you have to manually uh, take care of uh, focusing and so forth, the closest that comes to it is the X-Pro and the X-100 series. But if you want a true rangefinder that is digital and modern, uh, I would definitely go with the Leica cameras such as the M8, M9, M240, M10 and so forth. Manual focusing. This is a major point, uh, obviously, because when you talk Leica, you talk manual, the M series at least. There's no automaticity in the M series. It's all manual focusing, so you have your uh, focusing ring here. That's uh, the case for every single lens, be it a Leica lens or be it a, I don't know, for example, a third-party Voigtlander or any other brand. You can buy adapters, you can buy such things, but keep in mind that this guy here is fully 100% digital, which means you're not going to see optically through a window, you're going to see what the camera sees transmitted uh, electronically through a screen and that's what you're looking at. Um, X-Pro and X-100 series have the optical viewfinder, which comes again very close to it, but they're automatic type of camera. For example, the X-100 series cannot change the lens. It's the 23mm, 35 equivalent for full frame, that doesn't change. Um, the X-Pro series, you can put other lenses, but once again, if you want to focus, you will have in some way, even if you go manual focus, you will have to uh, relay on the electronics of it compared to a Leica camera. And that's something that is really good about the M series that you take your time to take a photo, you have to like compose, you have to focus, you have to make sure all the settings are right. Even though with the M10 it's mostly automatic, you can set everything automatic and it's pretty good, but it's good to do it yourself. So you learn more about photography and that's the whole plus of the M series. Quality of image and lenses. The Leica lenses are known for being crisp, tack sharp, such high quality lenses. I mean, you cannot really beat uh, Leica. This is just, they're, the main thing of Leica is the lenses. Um, that's my own opinion, but the lenses of Leica are just beyond out of this world in terms of sharpness and quality. Fuji, on the other hand, um, these lenses just shock me. 
in terms of price point, in terms of quality, in terms of sharpness, in terms of speed. Um, these guys are just great. I mean, you, you can't go wrong with any of the Fuji lenses. Some of them are a little bit slower, such as the first generation, for example, the uh, 23 and the 56 mil f1.4 and f1.2. Those are a little bit slower to focus. Uh, sometimes for weddings, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt, but uh, they fix that coming back with a 23 and a 50 f2. You lose a couple stops of light, but in terms of sharpness, size, speed, and price point, these are just amazing. So. Uh, you can see here that we're getting really, really close in terms of size to the Leica cameras. Both of these are F2, so Micron. Obviously, APS-C has a little difference in terms of uh, aperture, so you would have to change that, convert that as well, but they're very close also in terms of weight. This one is a 50 mil, this one is a 23. The 35 mil for APS-C is about the same size as this. I had it, so you can see here that it's not a huge difference. Budget. The price of the Leica ecosystem environment, however you want to call it, is extremely expensive. And I say extremely because it is affordable for some, but if you want to get a brand new uh, Leica M10 plus a lens, you, you get close to 10 Gs and more. Um, on the flip side, if you want to get a Fuji camera, you get the X-T4 for about 2K right now, a little bit less maybe, just came out. If you want to go for an X-T3 or if you want to take an X-Pro2, which are not the latest and greatest, you can get them for a really, really good price, which can have a reverse effect <laughs> because Leica will keep its value for a very, very, very long time versus Fuji that will basically lose it. Uh, almost instantly, meaning if you buy a Fuji camera, even the latest and greatest, uh, and you wait a couple months, it lost at least, uh, I don't know, a third of its value roughly, compared to a Leica. I remember selling my Leica that was really old, like many years old, and I still sold it for a couple K, which tells you right there that Leica is known for its quality. And also, um, besides the internal parts, electronics and all that, it is fully manual. So having a fully manual camera will not date. It will stay the same no matter how the technology moves. The only difference is the sensor and the megapixels. But when you go above 8, 10, 12 megapixels, unless you want to do huge posters and some advertisements or other things like that, having a, a 24 megapixels sensor is plenty. Okay, so let's talk about speed. Obviously, the Leica M series uh, cannot beat the Fuji uh, cameras. Uh, the X-T4, uh, I've been testing it for a bit now, this guy is, is absolutely crazy. I took a bunch of shots. I haven't missed a single one of them. So you can tell me, yeah, but dude, you're talking autofocus versus manual focusing. Yes, and that's that's the point. Uh, manual focus is not autofocus. And if you need to do any work, professional work, uh, where you need to be quick, uh, be it a wedding, be it, uh, I don't know, photo shoot, be it horse riding photo shoot, or anything else that is not... Uh, chilled photography, I would definitely recommend you go with Fuji versus Leica. Okay, so I did take a bunch of sample photos for you guys. I went to the lake the other day and I wanted to compare how the image quality straight out of the camera is for Fuji X-T4 versus the M10 that I have right here, both of these guys. I didn't have a 35 mil available right there for Leica, so what I did is I took the 50 mil and for Fuji, I took the 23. Obviously, it's gonna be a little bit wider for Fuji, but it gives you an idea uh, as to how the colors, it's important to notice that I kept the same aperture. I just changed one stop, so for example, instead of doing F2 for Fuji, I use 2.8. That way we have F2 for Leica, F2.8 for Fuji. It's a little bit closer in terms of uh, full frame and APS-C type of sensors. Here we go.
Okay, good. So those were the shots uh, that were a little bit wider. Uh, and now I'm going to show you the shots that are closer. For this shoot, I use a 90mm f2, so Sumicron for Leica, and I used a 50mm for Fuji. Both of them were set with the same aperture with one stop difference like I did for the other uh, shoot. So you will see that the Leica one is a little bit closer than the Fuji because of the focal length. But again, it gives you a little idea as to how the colors come out. Here they are. There you go, so that, that's my views on both these brands. Um, I don't think one brand is better than the other, to be honest. I know lots of people are gonna fire up on the in the comments below, tell me how Leica is so much better or how Fuji for the price is so much better, and you guys are all correct. It is true, Leica for the quality of the lenses cannot be beat. Fuji for the price point and for the quality you get is just amazing. I personally left every other brand to go to Fuji and I use Leica when I want those crisp nice images or if I just want to take my time go on the streets or do a little shoot with my family or friends and take the time to take nice crisp photos but if I don't have the time and I need to do a shoot I will obviously 100,000% go with Fuji. I hope this shed some light on you guys' thoughts and uh, questions about these two type of cameras uh, which one you should get. I made also a video about the Leica Q1 You'll find it up here and another review about Leica versus Fuji a few years ago. I think Leica Q is absolutely gorgeous, but once again, I don't know if I would use that for my professional work. So like, share, comment. Don't hesitate to comment. Let me know what you think. Do you guys have Leica? Do you guys have Fuji? Do you guys have both? Which one is the best for you? Uh, let me know. I'm actually very interested to have other people's viewpoints and I see you in my next video. Take care. Cheers.